Okay, Anthony. Where do you think you need to go next? Uh, I think I'll start off by writing a log, and then I'll try and cover like thread log and all the tools I use. Yeah. We have one-to-one -one reviews every month, basically, with our training coordinator. So basically, he sits down and has a look at NVQ how far we go, and he basically sets targets for us each month. Yeah. It's their NVQ. They're in charge of it. They're running it. So it's their time frame to a certain degree. They have other reviews, which are monthly reviews, but hopefully they're mature enough to realise they've got to achieve these targets. And I could put the pictures in which I took that from yeah. Robin. Yeah, you can. I think Andy's main mission was to point me in the right direction in, in regards with my NVQ. The one-to-one -one review is helpful to reflect on the job we've done, and it helps me to uh, see what I need to cover in my NVQ, really. There should be a few points I can cover there. Like, I think there's some stuff about replacing damage and defective components. Yeah. So, that so even only the job was, it wasn't yeah. a, a great technical job, it still manages to cover quite a few points, doesn't it? There's bearings and seals there as well, so yeah. cover that. Carrying our plan maintenance again, it was yeah, plan again, maintenance. You've got that, yeah. Working with others. Yeah, working with others yeah, as well. And working with Matthew, yeah, and Robin. Carrying on condition one, trying I don't think that's anything to do with that. That's electrical maintenance or nothing like that. Okay. That's about it, I think. Yeah, good. Quality assurance for all the everyday tasks that the workforce performs is essential. For BMW, that meant that the competence of the whole Swindon workforce should be assessed. Some associate workers were seconded to make that happen. They came from three different areas of the shop floor. One was a setter from the manual press line. Another was a press operator in the automated line. And the third member of the team came from the blanking department. Our customer, Oxford, needed proof that our associates were competent in carrying out their tasks every day. There was a pilot project to begin with um, of a manager and I think somebody else from another department that was seconded initially to try and find some kind of basis of qualification that could prove to Oxford that they could do their jobs. And I think that's how the competency assessment um, came together. The MVQ path was decided upon, so a programme was rolled out they found that was successful. So then the time frame was given to complete the whole of the factory and they decided that having three full-time associates to be trained as assessors would be the best way to go. Because it had the backing of the senior management, this enabled that the three of us who made up the team were taken off our jobs on the shop floor and put into the assessment role full-time, which was the only way a feasible way it could happen and without this backing and the, the time given we never would have achieved the numbers we did in the time we did. So what we did we looked at the whole process we looked at the things that they did that was common to their jobs and collected things like SBC sheets because everybody did an SBC sheet. Uh, we collected like um, guard sign-off cards which was what half of them were expected to do. So by the end we had a table of about four or five different elements that when we did um, eventually do an assessment with a person part of our pack was you know, one of these, one of these, one of these, one of those. Put that into our pack. Okay, Rose, I want you to do a SPC check as per normal on this panel. While you're doing it, I'm just going to watch you take a few pictures. Certain things I want to see you do as part of the check. If you miss it out, I'll just... I was it. assessed today with Jim Gould. I needed to prove to him that I, need, I knew how to do my, my job. Um, I had to do it absolutely spot on. What I tend to do firstly, I look at the OK panel first to see the um, level of OK um, to the quality specification. I then take the panel that we've just produced, go through the different aspects um, of my visual check. Okay, so that's your map sample. 
how, do you, how are you going to tell players to say this that? Well, on the line, we generally have what we call a quality care sheet. Now, on this quality care sheet, it's indicated all the critical areas of this particular panel uh, of where we should look, uh, where we should look for as a visual check. Go ahead and do the check then, folks. Right. What I then have to do, I need to look at my SBC sheet. The SBC sheet shows me, let's say, for example, how many holes I have to have. So on this sheet, it says I need to find six holes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll then tick to say yes, we have six holes. The next critical point to measure are the four corners for splits and these areas for short trims. All right. Now I find those also here. There's a picture that shows us the different areas we have to measure with calipers. We also have a measurement that we have to comply with um, and make sure that we stay within the parameter. The way I do this, this trained you how to use that, the team leader. Once I do the critical point, when I do the check, on here is that measurement of that particular gem. How do you know that that's all right at that measurement? I know that's all right, Jim, because that's the, what it says on the SPC sheet. What do you do if, if you get a measurement from the caliper? Is it is outside of the tolerance allowable, or that tells you on the SPC sheet? If it's below the minimum respectable um, measurement, I then have to inform the team leader, who will probably stop the line. Uh, what I do with that information, I write that into the critical area one, okay? Which is where the form indicates to me to take the measurement. Okay, fill in the sheet. Okay. I then carry that out as it instructs me on the form four times. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. So each one of those measurements goes into that form. So you, do you actually place that panel on top of the other one and compare plans, links and things like that? How do you know, there are, in my mind, that looks a bit out of shape there, how do you know that that is acceptable? Well, we know that acceptable by, by like you say, Jim, put that on top of the, the other panel to make a comparison, or by experience, Jim. I've been on this job for about five years now and I know whether that's a short trim or not. But yes, I could put that on top of there. Can you do that so I can take a picture, please? That's fine, Jim. Okay. 